Cancer and Biochemistry 17. What is different about how our clinic treats cancer? Hello, it's November 7, 2018, and I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, here again today in the latest installment of my Cancer and Biochemistry video series. In my last two videos, we discussed a little of the life and great work of Nobel biochemist Otto Warburg and biologist Thomas Seafried, whose research into the basis of cancer, its basic metabolism, now provides the scientific foundation of the most successful cancer treatments in use today. This is what is now known as the metabolic approach to cancer. Dr. Warburg first observed this essential mechanism of cancer, and Dr. Seafried did so much to bring the loose ends together and further prove and establish Dr. Warburg's discovery to the point where it is now irrefutable. However, both scientists focused on the origin of cancer and the conditions in the body that allow it. My job is different, however. Patients come to me from all over the United States and now from four continents to help them to eliminate cancer. This is quite a different responsibility for me as a clinician than for the two researchers. I cannot accomplish what I do without the work of those scientists. However, we needed to take their work a step further in order to be able to actually help patients. You remember that in my video on Dr. Otto Warburg, he showed that cancer begins with damage to the mitochondria here and persists due to defects in the mitochondria. And then Dr. Seafried and other scientists showed undeniable proof of this in their studies of cells. As a clinician then, working with cancer patients, I meet people every day who have suffered such mitochondrial damage. So my job is to repair that damage. Well, that is quite a bit different than simply identifying the problem, I actually have to reverse the problem. At this point, I've had to differ with Dr. Seafried. He has advocated fasting for cancer patients, and we actually find that to be not quite as helpful as the approach that I have shown in my previous videos in this series. The approach we have taken is to nourish and support and enable the normal mitochondrial metabolism here. In this way, we can take the most likely and most frequently trafficked, that is normal course of metabolism, rather than the cancer pathway. So we want to come down here instead of here. For example, in our first video in this series, I showed how vitamin B1 was necessary to convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, bringing, drawing, hijacking, if you will, the metabolism into the mitochondria and away from this cancer pathway. I next showed how vitamins B2 and B3 were necessary for the running of the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation here. I showed how the little known vitamin B4 or adenine was necessary for the last step in this process, that is to form ATP, which is our currency of energy, adenosine triphosphate. Then I showed how vitamin B7 or biotin was necessary to convert pyruvate to oxaloacetate. I showed how the nutrient CoQ10, also known as ubiquinol, here, was necessary to transport electrons down the electron transport chain to keep that process running. Finally, before I digress to talking about the esteemed scientist forerunners of the metabolic approach to cancer, I began to look at the many amino acids that work synergistically to turn the complete citric acid cycle. All of those processes are necessary for normal, strong mitochondrial function. So in this way, I provide the raw materials needed for the body to draw away from, as like I say, to detour from the cancer pathway. You remember the cancer goes off this way, to your right. But as we supply the needed materials here, 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 and here, and here, then you can see that we can keep this good machine running to the detriment of, or at the expense of, the cancer machine. And what do you know? Oddly enough, it works. Our clinic still has the best results of any cancer clinic that I can find throughout the world that reports its results online. What are the results? Well, here you go. We reported all data for all patients without exception who came to us with a diagnosis of cancer from 2006 to 2014. Beginning in 2009, I updated this table yearly. You can find this table online easily accessed from near the top of the homepage of our website. Click on the word documented. All patients' data is reported anonymously, of course, for everybody who stayed at least two weeks in our care during that time. But newsflash, those results, until something happened, 
were abysmal. Like I say, until something happened. Look at this. Of 379 total patients, only 175 went into remission, yet we have over an 80% success rate. Now how did that happen? Allow me to show you. Many of those patients came in kicking the tires, as I say. They were shopping around among different clinics, doctor hopping. People who do that generally don't have quite as good results. Many others chose chemotherapy. They were far more likely to die, of course, chemo being as poisonous as it is. Okay, so now we are down to a smaller group, those who stayed with us for the entire 12 weeks and who chose not to have chemotherapy. Now we are starting to get some good results, but still nowhere near good enough. What made the most powerful difference was when people chose to avoid sweeteners and sweetened foods. This is what I strongly recommend to everybody. But some people will listen to you and others won't. That's just how it goes. You have to love them and do your best for them anyway. So when we finally got down to the people who stayed at our clinic till either remission or death and who chose not to have chemotherapy and who chose to avoid sweetened foods, the rate of remission was at 90% whereas those who continued to eat sweetened foods had only a 36% rate of remission. Therefore, avoidance of sweetened foods made the biggest difference. However, that should not be a surprise, because if you saw my third and fourth video in this series, you know that is exactly what we are doing in the metabolic approach to cancer. We are starving the cancer pathway by eliminating sugar and sweetened foods. What our clinic does differently is that you not only need to starve the cancer pathway here, you need to nourish and support the normal pathway here to drive traffic away from the cancer pathway. That is, you need to give your metabolism a good place to go by opening up the roads in the healthy direction. And believe it or not, people actually begin to feel better when you give them this type of treatment. Here is a brief excerpt from the award-winning documentary, Cancer Can Be Killed, which features our clinic. You will hear patients of ours describing how well they feel. Colleen Huber and those like her think about the individual and the entire ecosystem system of that individual's being, both physically and their history. She has a purpose, she knows exactly what she needs to do, and she knows exactly what you need to do. And you follow her regimen. These other doctors, here's the template. Stick you in it. She's just the opposite. So I met with Dr. Huber every time I came in. She would collect um, my information of how I was feeling and how I was doing. And so the IV is made up just for me, for what I need um, to heal the body. She suggested different types of supplements, uh, such as turmeric and artemisia and dandelion root, things that would combat the cancer in my bloodstream as well as in my body. I, you know, I felt like the treatments, which were IVs three times a week, you know, all natural things um, to bring my, to build up my strength. And I did that for three months. She also insisted that I eliminate all forms of sugar from my diet. Well, that is why I like the metabolic approach to cancer a lot better than the cytotoxic approaches. It's November 7, 2018. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, and thanks for watching.